I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Tuesday, August the 2nd, brought to you in part by Beaver County Stockyards in Beaver, Oklahoma, on the eastern end of the Oklahoma Panhandle there. Uh, they've had a lot of rain, uh, needed every bit of it, hadn't had any all summer. Uh, got, got two to three and a half inches around uh, the Beaver, Oklahoma area there. Uh, it's a little bit muddy. They've got kind of a lighter run, about 2,000 head. Be mostly yearlings, probably 20 loads of yearlings. Uh, Jeff Slatton told me he had 350 head of little light six weight yearlings there. There should be the kind uh, to turn a double flip for you. Got about 100 head of cows there. And, and uh, if you're interested in that sale, get on to DV Auction and watch Beaver County Stockyards. If you're interested in bidding on there, uh, be sure and, and call ahead and tell them you're interested in bidding. Get approved to bid online there at Beaver County Stockyards here on Tuesday. Feeders still higher. Uh, your big high volume Monday sales were all higher. Uh, we just keep gaining. Uh, your grains are continue to drop a little bit uh, almost every day, every session. Uh, but the problem is your fat cattle continue to drop too. And uh, it's making people nervous. I mean, we've got the best feeding cattle of the year right now. Uh, your summer green grass yearlings uh, that are available around and, and coming off uh, uh, that dry grass and those cattle will really feed and they'll gain good and they'll perform like you can't believe but we're getting the price level so high cost of gains are still going to be high yes they're going to have some compensatory gain uh, that first hundred pounds will be for nothing but what about the next 500 pounds what's that going to cost to put on uh, it's it's worrying people quite a bit but everybody wants them and they're still digging in and the thing of it is is we have competition in your feeder cattle auctions that's what makes your prices higher every day because everybody wants them they're bidding again one another uh, for the cattle and that's what we don't have in the fat cattle industry uh, you know you, everybody's just turning them in on the grid nobody is competing they get into formula deals uh, you know the first uh, thing you have to do to join one of those formula deals is promise all your cattle to one packer eliminating competition uh, I've been trying to preach to you guys that we need Cattle Price Discovery and Transparency Act to, to not, you know, you know, mandate anything that's going to hurt anybody. The onus is all on the packers. All it is trying to do is preserve what little negotiated cash trade that we have right now. That's what it's doing. It would be the average of the last two years. It would preserve that. It would give uh, the USDA's Ag Secretary uh, about two years to do some some investigating, do some research, and then try to build on that neg negotiated trade. But everybody's scared to death of the government. Government tells them how fast they can drive, how much weight they can put on their trucks, uh, you know, how much a, a stamp costs and everything else. But they're scared to death of the government telling the Packers that they have to compete at some level for to, to procure all of their fed cattle. It's unbelievable how people could be uh, against something like that. But man, did we have a day on uh, Monday morning there uh, with my good friend Jimmy Craig uh, down in the Flint Hills, right in the heart of the Flint Hills at Cottonwood Falls, Kansas. Uh, we delivered uh, uh, about 10 loads of cattle, right at 10 loads. The last load is going to be a little light because they come up a little bit short. But uh, cattle was running on the Z Bar Ranch there, uh, just right outside Cottonwood Falls. Cattle come in uh, looking green. Uh, for the most part, talked to uh, many of the buyers around there, said most of the cattle, uh, the shippings that they're having, the cattle are coming in a little bit light. Now they had some moisture early and they've had some moisture here really late, too late, but it got pretty dry there in the, in the center part of the summer in just the 90 days that those double stock cattle have been out there. But, you know, the uh, steers are gaining around 220 pounds, uh, you know, for the short double stock period, which ain't terrible, but, you know, I mean, they're always shooting for 250, but uh, can't always get that. But cattle coming in a little bit light, cattle coming in really green, cattle look like they will absolutely gain their heads off whenever they stick it in a bunk uh, uh, with some commodity feed there at, at the feed yard. But uh, 
uh, you know, these these cattle looked really good. I mean, uh, these these would be these wouldn't even be northern types that I'm showing you uh, coming on here. They they would uh, uh, be a, a tick uh, plainer than that. There'd be some cattle on there that be some uh, white charlets with pink noses, which uh, you know a lot of your feedlots don't really like. Be some cattle with a tick of ear on there that your northern guys really didn't like. Now these cattle still went to Nebraska, but they're still not what you'd call northern quality kind. But being that they're feeding this time of year, uh, you know they'll be uh, they'll be about done by the time it starts getting really cold up there. And the fact that they don't have a lot of hair is not going to bother them at all. But uh, uh, they had great cowboys there and cowgirls and and young cowboys. Uh, they they do a great job there. You don't hear any hollering or screaming or you know, rattling of gates or any kind of that thing. It's really quiet. The way they handle those cattle because they're professionals and they know how to do it. The truckers are professional. They're quiet. They don't burn them up with hot shots or any of that kind of thing. They just uh, just kind of ease the cattle right on in there, uh, slide the gates down quiet, and, and, and take off uh, at a light speed there. They know exactly what they're doing. That's why they're still doing it. Uh, my good friend Jimmy Craig's been doing it for over 50 years, and, and he's got all the contacts there, and I'm just proud to call him my friend and uh, he's he's a legend in the business there and and uh, uh, Diamond Jim I wrote a magazine article about him uh, one time and it was called the Ballad of Diamond Jim and we joked about that on Monday morning as as we were delivering those cattle but uh, just gracious to him to invite me down we had to get together with some of the cowboys and some of the owners of the cattle the night before and just uh, really proud to get to go with him and, and share some of that information and, and stories and pictures with you guys. But talk about your board to open the week on Monday. August live cattle futures up 32 cents at 136.77. October up 40 cents at 142.62. Your back months on live cattle were up 35 cents to up a buck ten, so all higher there. August feeder cattle up big because your grains were cheaper. Uh, August up 107 and it's been trading and still trading at a significant premium to what our cash index levels are at but it's continuing to do that 179.65 for August feeder cattle we're in August guys nearly a buck 80 on an 800 pound steer cash price wow it, it takes I mean it takes some humdingers to bring that September feeder cattle up 155 at 183.10 so gonna get even better I guess your back months on feeder cattle up 165 to up two dollars smooth. Uh, your December new crop corn down ten and a quarter cent on Monday, uh, closing regular trading at 609 and three quarter cent a bushel. That's still a lot higher than we've been dealing with, guys. Uh, we know it's a lot cheaper than that old crop stuff, but my gosh, the cost of gains, you know, still going to have to be, you know, a buck and a quarter, buck thirty anywhere, and closer to forty probably down in the southern plains where they have to haul it so far because freight is so expensive right now. Beans down sixty-two and a half cents. Had some good rains. Uh, across many parts of the country over the weekend there and expecting some cooler temperatures although I'm in Omaha, Nebraska and it ain't cool here. I mean it's hot and the humidity's up uh, but the crops look excellent right here in this part of Iowa. I know out in the western corn belt you guys are, are dry and it's getting really bad out there but I know you guys in the eastern corn belt look even better than here but beans down 62 and a half cents for November new crop uh, ending regular trading at 1406 on Monday. Weighted average on last week's negotiated fed cattle trade in your five area feeding region 61,100 a little bit better than the 58,400 uh, that we had uh, the previous week and uh, not quite as good as the 64,200 we had the same week a year ago but that that's nothing guys. I mean back when we traded cattle cash we would trade a hundred thousand in every uh, region and can't even get um, hardly any more than 60 in your five areas combined. Uh, you talk about your live sales last week, uh, steers and heifers, they sold from 134 to 146. Uh, only 165 head actually sold at 134, it's mostly 135 and 6 in the southern plains and only 199 heads traded at 146 in the northern plains. Most of them selling from 142 to 144 there, but your weighted average on live steers in your five-area feeding region, 
139.83. That was a dollar and 29 cents lower on your weighted average from the previous week, although your price spread was looking steady. Dress sales, steers and heifers last week ranged all the way from 213 to 230 really, but there was only 78 head or something like that that traded at 213, but they still quoted it that way. It was mostly 222 to 230, and that'd be straight up two bucks lower, and that's about what your weighted average was on dress steers. 225.53 was just uh, 206 lower than the previous week's weighted average. Nationwide negotiated sales, uh, not quite 75,000 head there. Uh, and 24,700 head of those was for the two to four week delivery. Uh, your packers are still counting on beating this market up through August. They, they, August is their favorite month. They love beating the market up in August. We were looking here a, a month or six weeks ago that we were going to be so short of cattle and market ready supplies uh, that, that uh, August was going to be a boon. But we, we, we worked through those pretty fast. Uh, the Packers kind of held up the slaughter just a little bit and him hawed around, got some uh, captive supplies put together, and now we're back up there where everybody's just pretty current. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say we're, uh, we're bogged down at all, but we're not really green and, uh, and we're just kind of hand to mouth right now keeping things current. But 33% of those cattle for 15 to 30 day delivery, they're, they're counting on spreading those numbers out and beating the market up some more here through August while everybody is blowing their brains out on these feeder cattle, my gosh. And now that we can't count on uh, cash to ever reach where the board is quoting, I'm not sure how that's gonna work out for guys. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad the feeder cattle market is up. But negotiated grid prices last week were 47,900 head in total. Uh, your forward contracts were not quite 31,000. And formula deals, 277,100 head. Box beef cutout values were higher to start the week out on Monday. Choice cuts, 270.60. That was $1.36 higher. Selects up 65 cents at 242.90. Uh, talk about your feeder cattle market. Real-time index on DV auction late in the day on Monday set at 172.45. That was up another 13 cents. And like I said, all your high volume sales, which are mostly in the Southern Plains, but higher, still boosted your, your index level there on your real-time index uh, to end the day on Monday. And that's through Monday's sales there. But don't forget Joplin Regional Stockyards is having a special count bull auction on Wednesday here tomorrow. Uh, that starts at 4.30 in the afternoon, and they've got several dispersals on there. If you're interested in getting some cows and you've got some grazing or you've got some hay where you're at, be a good, good time to get in on some, guys. How about your high-volume sales on Monday? Oklahoma National Stockyards in Oklahoma City, 9,700 head. Good run for them. Everything higher except for heifer calves. Feeder steers, 3 to $5 higher. Feeder heifers, steady to $3 higher. Steer calves five to seven dollars higher. I think they were ten to fifteen last week. Heifer calves three to four dollars lower. But uh, really good sale in Oklahoma City, including this quote from National Livestock: sixty-one head, six hundred and thirty-nine pound steers at one hundred and eighty-nine dollars in Oklahoma City on Monday. Joplin Regional Stockyards at sixty-five hundred head. Market there mostly steady on everything. Uh, called it mid-session. I uh, didn't have the final report out, but I'd say it wouldn't be far from there. Mostly steady with the good market that they had last week, which would be pretty impressive, including 60 head, 888 pound steers in Joplin, bring 169.75. Talk about Russell livestock market in Russell, Iowa. Not too big of a run, but they had uh, some impressive loads of feeder steers, but about 1,800 head there. Look at all these loads of feeder steers out there in Iowa, farmer feeders in the market there, including right here, seven loads of eight weight steers selling from 175 and a half to 181 and a quarter. Wow. How about Sioux Falls Regional Livestock Market it's in uh, Worthing, South Dakota, actually, 111 head of 1,004 pound steers bring 172 and a quarter. Big time quote. How about out east? Bluegrass Stockyards South in Stanford, Kentucky. 58 head, 824 pound steers at $175. But 
your Zoetta stick out sale of the day is Callaway Livestock Center in Kingdom City, Missouri, about halfway between Kansas City and St. Louis, right on I-70 there. Man, did they have a sale there. Wow. Uh, they had three loads of these six-weight steers bring from 206.5 to 213. Now, they've got the quality there, too, but my gosh, look at the price, guys. That uh, also included in this uh, bunch that I pulled for you is your Macrosin. No BS, top quote for the day, 60 head, 870 pound steers at 182 bucks. That's your feeder flash for Tuesday.